never know what tomorrow brings in this crazy life. Hey, this life, this life, this life. Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Barbara223. We are back again with another video. I know it's been a while. I apologize for that. I have been very, very busy with real life. I have been dealing with the end of school and finishing out the semester and driving back and forth. So I've finally done school. I'm finally getting back into the grind. And to be honest, guys, I've been really annoyed with ESO lately. Like, it's just, I, I mean, like, I've been playing okay and all, but it's just like, I don't know. I feel like the state of the game is trash. And. With next update, it's going to be even worse considering that I, I know I said before I thought this was going to be good with them making proc scale off of your stats, but no, it's not. It's going to be a bad thing based on all the videos. I'm sure most of you have seen what the YouTubers have said. But anyways, we're back, and as always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and let's just get right into it. I'll go right. I'm not going to, I'm going to go through it quick. It's just a build I've been having fun on, so I just wanted to show you. So anyways, so we got 40k magic. We have... 26k health, but on the back bar we have 28k health, we have 1300 recovery, but that's actually higher because of our net, and when we get minor magic steal, it's even better, so that's good. We have almost 3k spell damage, unbuffed, and then we get 25% crit, the penetration is 3200, but that is way off, because we're actually got the train, I'm going to transmute my staff soon, so that's going to go up by like, whatever, 3200, so that's more, and then we get minor breach, or major breach, when we use our deep fissure, so that guy, this goes way higher than what it is. I don't know. It's wrong right now, so don't don't take that into account. But anyways, so our resistances are um, 34 and 32. So we're maxed out on the back bar, and then on the front bar we're pretty much maxed out. We got tw we got 30 and then 28, so that's really good. So yeah, that I'm I'm okay with that. I can take that. What in the world is going? Why? Jesus. Anyways, so let's get into the gear. So we have a Master Ice Staff here. Now, most of you are probably going to say, you're a dummy using a, a, a Lightning Staff because you do AoE damage. I know, I know. Listen, I just like the Ice Staff because it's fun. It, it feeds into the Warden theme. You know, it's just a lot more fun to do what your class is supposed to do. I know, I know. And, of course, the Charge is not what you want on this. You want Sharpened. I'm going to transmute it. But, yeah, Sharpened is better. Nurn Honed is better. Infuse is even better. So anything besides Charge... Status effects just aren't good enough to have being able to use this. So, of course, the Master Staff reduces the cost of Destructive Touch and increases your spell damage by a whopping 600 for 4 seconds. So, if you use your uh, Deep Fissure and then use this right before, you can immobilize somebody and essentially lock them in place and you're, they're going to get hit with your Deep Fissure. So, that's why I really like about the Ice Staff is that at least you can spam and immobilize it, like more than a CC, which is something that is a good feature. So, on top of that... You can also block, which is why we're using Arrestive Staff on the back bar, because at least you can get the block mitigation somewhere. So that's nice as well. But yeah, we're on the back bar, we're using Impregnable as Arrestive Staff. Now the main reason is because it gives max health. So the reason we do that is because Arctic Blast scales on your max health. So getting more max health on that bar is going to be beneficial. So that's good. I mean, what I would probably do instead is use an Endurance Arrestive Staff, or even use a... Uh, a trainee rest of staff that way you can get health and magic that way but it's just what i had on me at the moment and anything that gives health on the back bar is going to be better than not so yeah i would just do that so yeah that's our that's our two weapons and then of course our other five piece right now is fortified brass i mean this is my bread and butter lately it's such a good set like it just gives so much tankiness to where you can build and damage in other areas like it's just really nice so it pretty much is like guarantees you maxed out resistances on any build. Like if you run a couple heavy pieces in this, you're gonna be maxed out. So that's what I like about it. Like it just gives you so much more of a room in other places to do things. Especially and it works in no procs, of course. So in Cyrodiil, it's very valid. It's a very good set. It's one of the meta sets, of course. It's good. That's why I use it. It's just it makes me feel much more safe. So, anyways, so the other five piece we're using is Crafty Alphique, Magic, 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 and then you guessed it, more Magic. So. This is one of those sets where you're, it's one of those builds where you're just maxing out stats pretty much. Like, you're getting a, bottle, a lot of resistance, a lot of health, and a lot of magic. So, it's very good in that way. I like it a lot, being able to have max out resistance. And then 40k magic on top of it. Now, I mean, you could go spell damage. Like, I tried spinners, and I know spinners is probably better for pure damage. But I like using Crazy Alphique on a Warden because, like, I feel like... Warden's like an expensive class in terms of like skills because you got to use Arctic Wind, you got to use this, that, and the other. Like, you got to use Crystallized Shield. Like, you got to keep all these buffs up. So, being able to have a lot of magic to do that is very nice. Now, one thing I want, want you guys to know is that my I want you want Impen on all these. I don't have it. <laughs> I uh, I have the wrong traits. So, 
Make sure you get impen if you can. Reinforce is good on the big pieces as well, like I have here. So you could do that. But yeah, impen. And we're running four heavy, I believe. Yeah, four heavy, three light. So if you want to run whatever you want to run, I mean, you could run five heavy or six heavy. Like, whatever you want to do. I just think heavy armor is so much better than light right now. It's just, like, it's never going to change. As much as I wanted it to change in the update, like, I tested both. And it's just way better to run heavy. So, yeah, our five pieces are fortified and crafty. And then, of course, the jewelry here. Now, you want to get these infused if you can. That would be ideal. And I'm running one of each. So, a recovery, a spell damage, and a reduced cost. I don't know. It, it just feels good. I don't know. Reduced cost seems like it does a lot, even though it seems like it shouldn't, right? Like, it only reduces the cost by almost 200. But, like, it feels like it has such a nice impact, especially on wardens that are expensive to run. So, I don't know. Um, you could run whatever you want here, just I would go infused if you can, I just didn't have enough transmutes, and I don't want to waste them on a build that I'm still testing, so, yeah, that's the gear, so, we are going to, oh, I wanted to tell you, before I uh, move on to the skills, what you could do if you wanted to, uh, you could also run Balorg as your monster set, and you could drop the master staff, and then run, like, crafty there, and then you could just, fill in the gear as follows like you pretty much just switch out the master staff for Balorg if you want to i like the master staff since you can have the buff up a lot more often so that was just how i felt but you could use Balorg too if you want to but anyways the skill so <clears throat> we're using mage light now of course we're in heavy armor so the crit isn't that big of a deal but you also get the five percent max magic so you're just like doing five percent extra more damage because you're max magic so that's really good as well i mean being able to crit more often is going to make a big difference for you so it, it, it felt so much better than not having it for me personally. Like, I tried a couple other things, and I think Mage Light is what you got to have here. So, make sure you get Mage Light on the front bar. And then, of course, we have Deep Fissure. I don't even know what the tooltip is. What is it? I don't know. Four, fifth, 14 and a half K. It's pretty good. Like, pretty good. Pretty damn good skill, and you could use it constantly. It's only 2100, so it's cheap, and it does a huge AoE. And, of course, it applies Major Breach. So, having a debuff in one of your bread and butter skills is such a good feature. Like, you don't have to fill up another skill slot just to have elemental drain that makes the biggest difference i'm telling you like being in heavy armor and not having the highest penetration this really helps you out a lot so it feels good to have that now of course bird of prey is a must you get minor berserk you get five percent extra damage you get movement speed it's just a great skill to have plus you get two percent extra damage from this passive here everything that's slotted from this tree you get two percent damage so you got to have that slotted on the front bar same thing with this now, this is a nice dot, because as a Warden, they don't even have that many damage skills. You really just use Deep Fissure, and then you're spammable. So, like, being able to have a little dot in there really helps. And another thing about it is a pretty good dot, and every, every second cast does 50% extra damage. So, you're at 13.4, it's going to do 50% extra damage, so it's like 18k-ish, I don't know. But, on every second cast, plus, it increases their damage taken by 5%, which is essentially your damage done to them from you and everyone else by 5%. So you can do 10% pretty much extra damage to everybody if you have Fetcher and then Bird of Prey. So that's really good. And then, of course, we're using Frost Clench because of the Master Staff. It doesn't hit super hard. We know Frost Clench, or we know both all the clenches, right? It's not. We're not using it because it hits hard. We're using it because it procs our spell damage. So if you use a Deep Fissure... And then you hit an enemy with a clench. See, it all hits at once and bang. And it immobilizes too, which is real. I leveled up Fetcher Infection, but it's really nice because it'll also just like it'll immobilize people. So if you hit them, you use Deep Fissure, you hit them with a clench, they're immobilized, they're gonna get hit with all of that up at once. So, and then as well, we have Northern Storm, Bread and Butter Ultimate. It's God Mode. You get major. You get major protection, right? Yeah, you and major, nearby allies get major protection. You get 15% max magic, meaning you're going to hit way harder. So the tooltip's actually higher than that, clearly, right? Because you're going to get the extra magic, and it reduces the movement speed of enemies. So, like, it's just a great skill. It's one of the best alts in the game. It's so good. So on the back bar, we're using Ice Fortress. Of course, this gives your major resolve, which you have to have. And it gives minor protection, so you're getting a flat 5% damage reduction at all times, which is just beautiful. Like, it's one of the best armor skills. Because of that, I would say it's up there with the Necro ability. But, yeah, this and Necro are probably my favorite two armor abilities, even though all of them are pretty good. I mean, Templar has a really good armor ability as well with the recovery. But, yeah, this is, I mean, minor protection, you can't complain, right? So, and then we have Shimmering Shield. I think this skill is one of the best skills in the entire game. Um, it essentially makes a, a Sork 
not able to hit you. So use this and their crystal fags. This does nothing. And on top of that, you're getting major heroism. You're getting an insane amount of ultimate regen. Like, that's insane how much ult regen you get just from having this up. And it, it's every time. So it's not like you get it once in the entire duration of the skill. It keeps refreshing for everything you absorb. So that's so nice. And on top of that, you get 750 magic back for each one you absorb. So if you absorb all of them, we'll say you get like 2300 back. This skill becomes a 1200 cost because you're getting your magic back. So such a good skill you have to have this on your bar in my opinion i don't know how people play without it i don't know how people play warden without this skill i gotta be honest it's such a good skill so yeah anyways so next we're using livid trellis i think this is a, my favorite skill for warden to be honest because having this up like it has a dot heal and a burst heal so like how beautiful was that it's a dot heal for yourself it's like rapid regen but then on top of it at the end it's a little burst heal so let's say you're in trouble you're getting hit like you have the dots on you whatever you have a dot heal on you, you get and you go behind a tree you need a burst heal you use this and then you use that and you get a nice little burst heal so i like it for that reason and it's really nice for your teammates because if your teammates are in trouble you can pop this and just hit them with that and they'll get a lot more damage mitigation just from this so i like that a lot now we're using arctic blast i told you this does this skill is good I don't know. It's a little wonky. I don't I don't know. It is what it is, guys. Like this is what we have. And as much as I want to say, "Oh, just go and use fungal growth instead because it's a great heal as well." Like it's not I mean, you get you get extra recovery from using this, but like you need a CC as a warden, and this is your CC. It's not the best CC, but Jesus Christ, it's the only option we have. So this is what you're going to have to use as your CC. It's a it's good. Like it works because you have you need it. It's just weird. I don't know. It's not as good as I want it to be, but it's a must. So it has to be on the bar. But anyways, we have the blue Betty again. Another must-have skill. Now, if you want to, you could. I guess you could say. I want to say you could throw it on the front bar, guys, to get extra two percent damage. But you really can't. There's nothing you have here that makes any sense to replace. <laughs> so let's say if you didn't use Mage Light, you could throw this on the front bar. But there's no point. You might as well just keep Mage Light and have this on the back bar. So, of course, you get your Brutality and Sorcery, which gives you the extra weapon and spell damage. And, of course, um, it restores a bunch of magic for you. So, that's another really nice thing. I think it gives you over 100 and something recovery. So, that's really good. And then every 5 seconds, it removes a negative effect. But that actually doesn't matter. Like... It doesn't actually, like, you can just spam it and remove negative effects. Like, if you're behind a tree and you have, like, Hunter's Venom or a Black Rose Prison Dot, like, you can just hide behind here or, like, the Master Dual Wield and spam it and get rid of it. So that's really nice. I like that a lot. Like, having an on-demand cleanse that gives so many different things at once. Magic regen, extra spell damage, and it gives you a cleanse. It's And it costs nothing, and it gives you a small heal. What an orc could you freaking ask for? So good. So, must have again. And then, of course, we're using Enchanted Forest. You could use the rest of the wall if you want to, but I like this one because it's so, so cheap. And on top of it, you regen 20 all if you're low health, so I think that's a really, really valuable thing to have. So yeah, um, that's pretty much the skills, guys. And I guess I'll show you the CP. So in the green tree, I didn't even get them. It's whatever. All you're going to really want to get is the mount speed maybe and the environmental damage, so you take less fall damage. So that's really good. But other than that, you don't need it. So here, we'll, I'll just show you what pieces we're running with the 4R, because there's no reason to go into super detail. So we're using um, extra dun extra damage done with AoE effects. So that's uh, Deep Fissure and Northern Storm is really going to shine with this. So I feel like that's your bread and butter. So that's what you want to upgrade. You get pretty much 10% done with all that. And then you get, uh, here we go, we have crit resist here. I think this is very important because in Cyrodiil there is no Malakath, so everyone's doing crit damage. So having crit resistance is very important. So next... We have increasing your weapon and spell damage here. I need three more to max this out. Woo. But anyways, yeah, you just have, a, you get extra, you get 150 when you max it. So untamed aggression. And then arcane supremacy, you get extra magic. So that's what I have on as my four pieces. Feel free to pause the video and put these on. And then, of course, in the red tree, we have, here we go. So while afflicted with a status effect, which is pretty much always, it can be poison, flame, fra any any status effect, which is always going to happen. Your core combat skills cost 5% less per stage. Now, I don't know exactly what a quote-unquote core combat skill is. I don't know if that's all of them or what, but you get a 25% cost reduction, and it feels like it helps my, my, my uh, sustain way better. So it's a really good one. So the other one we have a Juggernaut. While under the effects of crowd control immunity, you take 2% less per stage, so you get 10% damage mitigation. 
So pretty much all the time, because you're going to get stunned constantly, right? So like, you got to have that on. Like, you're going to always be in CC immunity. If you get stunned, you get 10% damage mitigation. Like, there's no point in not having it. And on top of that, it pairs with the next one. Increases duration of crowd control immunity by 3% per stage. So not only do you get 10% damage mitigation when you're in CC immunity, you get 15% extra duration to it. So that's really nice. And then um, the other, the last one we get is extra armor. We don't have that maxed out just yet, but you get maxed or extra armor from it, ironclad. Something's hitting me. Yeah, I heard it. There you go. I'll show you the combo. See? That's how you do it. That's it. But, uh, yeah. So those are the CP guys. And... Honestly, that's really all I have. I just wanted to show you with the build I'm running and tell you, you know, pretty much what I do. The combo is simple. You just use D-Fissure, get your dots on them, and just do damage. Make sure you keep this up and your dot and your dot heal up, and you should be all right. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you have a great one, and I'm going to be uploading a gameplay soon. I probably won't have it in this video, so I will have it, like, very soon. I'm also going to upload a Magic DK build coming soon as well. And hopefully the new update comes out soon so I can review some of the new sets. So, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you have a great one. And uh, as always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Thanks.